So now, is it fair to call junior doctors greedy for threatening more strikes after landing a pay rise? 0207 862 is the number. They're going to get an average raise of 22% over two years. We'll see the figures in just a moment. Health Secretary Wes Streeting says he's pleased with the deal, which two-thirds of junior doctors voted to accept. Some medics, though, believe it fell short, according to union leaders at the British Medical Association. They say doctors must get pay rises each and every year to avoid more disputes with the government and potential strike action. Let's just have a look then at the numbers, if we can. So, a lot of people are very happy the doctor's strike is over. No question, they're clapping and cheering. Others are asking, how much money did you actually give them? See if we can get the answer from the BMA's own website. There it is, BMA Org, BMA Campaigns. There it says download details. Press it, let's see. So there you see this document, which basically is the government's readout of what they're offering and there's a bit, you can look at all these figures and, and almost sort of uh, get dizzy looking at all the numbers. So let's yeah. just try and get through this thicket here and work out what the pay deal means. So here we have foundation training year one, 2022, 23, it was 29 grand, 24, 25, 36 grand. Year two, 22, 34 goes to 42. Yeah, You're getting the drift of it. It's yeah. quite, quite a big rise. Specialist training year one to two goes from 40,000 to 49,000. And specialist training year three to five goes from 51 to 61. And then specialist training year six goes from 58,300 to 70,400 pounds. So that is essentially, those are the numbers. And I suppose if you're thinking of just one, 58 to 70 at the top, that's a big old jump. And, and the question is not whether the doctors deserve it because that, that ship has sailed, as they say. It's whether they have a right to strike again next year, Gitto. I don't like the idea of strikes uh, other than uh, as an ultimate last resort, particularly among people who are sort of white collar workers and intelligent. If you resort to industrial action and one that affected, I think, 60,000 operations yeah, and appointments, uh, the, 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 the devastation, the carnage, the pain, literally the pain was kind of was kind of huge. So, uh, you know, people are entitled to expect now that a decent deal has been done that that should resolve it for a little while. I'll tell you what I think really needs to happen though, is the junior doctors have got to help West Streeting, who I think is one of the classier members of, of, of this cabinet, to sort of reform the NHS and find the deep and obvious savings that there are to be made in all the bureaucracy and all the processes and procedures so that everyone on the front line, junior doctors, senior doctors, nurses, auxiliaries, all of them on the front line, over time are paid substantially more. Tessa. Why is it that in Germany, they have 4.3 doctors to every thousand people, and in Britain, we have one of the lowest rates of doctors per head of population in the OECD. We have 2.9 doctors per thousand people. The average across the, uh, the developed world is 3.9. So we, in terms of being the patient, the consumer, are underserved. There is a shortage I don't know. What is the answer? Doctors. There must be an answer to that. We haven't got enough doctors. They're all well, going part time. We're trying to do it on the cheap. We're yeah, living a lot. We've got a, a sicker population, an older population. I don't, the, so many possible answers. But, but, but the, the but, reason We haven't got any is, money. The, the answer, truth is we're underserved. We don't have enough doctors. There's well, yeah, a shortage of nearly 9,000. The, the answer, answer cannot be that we need to put more money into this pot because we are spending the equivalent of the GDP of Greece on the NHS. One simple example, I get a letter from my GP or, you know, post some sort of, you know, hospital visit, a letter through Royal Mail where a first class stamp now costs £1.35, £1.60, just gone up to yeah. £1.60. Why on God's earth? And if you imagine the number of letters that go out, that is one simple saving that would fund something really significant. Yeah, we don't know. There are some people who need it by letter. I, I, the story about a year ago of the postman turns up at somebody's house in tears and they say, what's wrong with you? And he says, I've just been to the, the old woman down the street. She's been waiting two years for a hip operation and I've delivered the letter which tells her the hip operation is due two weeks ago. So she knows she's missed it. And she just says, I'll have to wait another two years no. then. And he bursts into tears. Heartbreaking. Oh, terrible. Sarah in Surrey, hi. Good morning. What would you like to say on this? Um, regardless of my personal opinion, um, 
I, I feel they are actually in danger of making themselves look greedy and could potentially lose public support. There's no denying that for many, many years, they, nurses, other frontline services have been underpaid. They have now got what they wanted. So maybe now they should just take a step back have a look at what the long-term effects on their pay is and think about that for the future. Yeah, I, it, I, it, 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 I suppose the problem would come, Sarah, if we had another post-Ukraine moment like we had where inflation suddenly goes to 12%. And that's when it just kicked off everywhere, but, didn't it? But I also wonder, Sarah, do you believe in market forces? Of course, market forces affect everyone. And it doesn't just affect the junior doctors. It affects the nurses. It affects other things. You, you talk about a lack of doctors compared to other countries. Um, maybe retention is another thing that should be looked at in a pay package because I know personally people that have had brilliant NHS training, absolutely brilliant, and then within six months of qualifying, have gone to work in the private sector. Well, so retention that's... needs to be looked at as well. But my point is at this moment, they are not the only people on frontline services who have been underpaid for many years. But why do you say market forces? Why do you say that? Because... At the moment, we have a shortage of doctors, so it doesn't matter whether you or I, Sarah, consider them greedy or well-paid. The boot is firmly on their foot because they know we need them more than they arguably need us because they can just abscond to the private sector or go to Australia. Why, why is so, it absconding to go to the private sector? Well, b because you get paid way more, Jeremy. Let's not pretend. You do is half a day like in the NHS to salvage your in, conscience. In football, and... there aren't enough strikers. And, and they're, they're, therefore they are expensive. And the same with doctors. I, I In the world, the world doesn't have enough doctors. I agree with you, but to equate doctoring with footballers, I don't think that the two are comparable. I think there's an element of public service. I think we have to encourage doctors to remain in the NHS, and some of that comes with financial leverage. We have to pay them realistically. Okay. Uh, let me, I'll come to you, Gitto, in just a sec, but David on Facebook says they're not greedy at all. I support them 100%. They're right to keep the threat on the table. That is the equivalent of holding the government's feet to the fire to make sure they keep their end of the deal. Aaron, I don't know if it's Aaron or Aaron. Aaron on Facebook says it never stops with them. We're all suffering. Why should one group feel themselves special enough to not suffer also? It is, one problem here, Gitto, is that when people realise that we can't allow them to strike, they're too, they're too big to strike, really. They can, the leverage is incredible, isn't it? It is. And so, you know, with, with, with power comes responsibility or should do. And, you know, I'm, I'm sure most of them felt really rotten about sort of denying patients, you know, pain relief and treatment and, and cures and, and all the rest of it. So it's, it's a difficult position because long term, we all know that the doctors who we, the people who became doctors, when we were at school with them, they were almost invariably among the cleverest people there. And they hardest also, working as well. And yeah. hardest working and, and, and also in one of the most noble and worthwhile professions. Mm. So if you're talking theoretically, there is no, there are very few targets for, for decent pay than, than, than qualified doctors. However, we also know that there's a limited budget. It's a public service in the UK. They can go off to the se private sector and foot. And within that, if you pay doctors a certain amount, then policemen take their cue from nurses, that. And nurses and others. Hospital and before porters. you know it, yeah, yeah, for and sure. And then you have inflation at 20%, which wipes out all the gains that everyone has made. Okay, Sylvia in Durham High, what do you think? Can they strike again next year if they want to? No, I think they're being totally and utterly. Uh, unreasonable and selfish, me personally. Um, I think 22% is a pretty decent rate to get. And we've got to remember that this country is in an absolute shambles. <laughs> and there's many people out there. You've got people who can't eat, people who can't pay their rent, people losing their homes, people can't pay their heating bills and electric bills. So there's many things going on in this country. Oh, you've only just so started. Let's do the whole list. Sewage in the rivers. We don't seem to have an yes, army anymore. Exactly. It goes on and on and on. And when you go on about the army, you've got people like people in the forces, 
people in the police. Um, ambulance drivers. I know. We, listen, concerned. we haven't. We literally haven't got time to do the whole list. We've only got another yeah. hour on the air. Yeah. Yeah. All exactly. right. Thank you, Sylvia. Exactly. Thank you for reminding us. It's the papers. Now. <laughs> One day we'll have a thing where we say this country's in a great shape.